Hello, welcome back to Game Code Mastery. Today, I'm going to teach you about a really important professional design pattern that we're going to be using heavily in future videos. This design pattern is called the Single Responsibility Pattern, which is a design pattern that will help you write cleaner, more scalable code to better handle larger and more complex projects. This video will primarily be focused on the practical application of this principle in a real project that is large and advanced so that you can fully understand how to actually put these design principles to use and the practical advantages of doing so. This is about taking a system that worked well and transforming it into something that could scale with ambitious game development. Something to note before we continue, this video is intended for intermediate game developers, so I expect you to already be familiar with Unreal Engine and concepts like functions, classes, and inheritance. Before we dive into the more practical examples, let me quickly explain the single responsibility principle for those who might be new to it. The single responsibility principle, or SRP, is simple. Each class or component should have one reason to change. In other words, each piece of your code should have exactly one job and do it well. Think of it like a professional kitchen. You don't have one person serving customers, cooking, and cleaning dishes all at once. If one person tries to do everything, things get messy and mistakes happen. Instead, you have different people with different roles. One person handles the cooking, another serves the customers, someone else cleans the dishes. Each person has one clear responsibility. In game development, this typically means using a technique known as composition. So what is composition and how is it more preferable sometimes to inheritance? Composition represents a part of relationship between objects. For example, a health component can be part of a player character. An attack component can also be part of a player character. So an object can be part of another object. This allows complex objects to be constructed using different components known as subobjects. And subobjects are objects that are owned by other objects. This will turn your game's code into a tidy toolbox. Each tool has its own purpose, making it easier to create and improve your game. But why does this matter? When your classes or functions have too many responsibilities, this can introduce tight coupling, which in a nutshell means that a bunch of unrelated systems are tightly connected and interdependent on each other. In a practical sense, this will result in changes to one system unintentionally breaking other unrelated systems. Even if you already use components, there's much more to making scalable code than just moving code to components. Because if the components themselves don't follow the single responsibility pattern, your code can still end up becoming a tangled mess. Let's start out by learning how to identify tight coupling. The biggest telling sign of tight coupling is if you have created what is known as a god class. A god class is a bloated class that handles everything in one place, rather than distributing responsibilities to smaller focused units. Heavily using inheritance without composition can sometimes lead to creating these god classes. God classes are a problem because a class with too many reasons to change has too many reasons to break as well. A god class can also increase coupling throughout the entire system. To help you in identifying tight coupling, I'm going to use a practical example from one of my old projects. Let me show you an early version of Advanced RBG Combat V2 which was more tightly coupled than later versions. This makes it a great, real practical example of the problems that tight coupling can cause in large projects. The biggest issue was with the equipment system. And one of the biggest issues with the equipment system was that the equipment component had so many responsibilities that it ballooned in size and became a god class. And as you can see, there is a huge list of functions here. Now imagine, you're trying to figure out how this system is working, or you want to modify something and try to customize it for your game, that would be very difficult. And you can see a lot of different things that the equipment system is handling for the combat system that it really shouldn't be, like retrieving the action montages for different actions, managing the combat type. We are also setting combat type parameters. This component also handles equipment specific functionality, running various update functions to enable or disable features based on what types of items were equipped. For the archery system, for example, we have things like um, attaching the arrow to the hand, item type unequipped, so handling unequipped. You can see that this sort of controls a lot of different things. 
So if I decide to make any sort of major major refactors to the equipment system, let's say I don't want to handle things the way that I'm handling it here, or I need to do something more flexible, as soon as I change this implementation, it's just gonna break the entire combat functionality. And that's a huge problem. Another huge problem is, so if I go in here to the character class, if I select the equipment manager component and right click, find references by name, and just look at all of the references in here to the equipment component, you can see that there are a lot. There are also on item equipped events in the character blueprint and other things like a damage system, action system, events for status effects are here as well, and more. In this version, equipment was so deeply glued into the combat system that removing or changing it meant refactoring most of the combat code. This is a telling sign that some tight coupling might be going on. On top of that, as the equipment component and character class took on more responsibilities, they ballooned in size and complexity and became god classes, making them harder to debug and maintain. So we have correctly identified some tight coupling. Now let's talk about the solution. I was able to fix these issues in the version 3 update by redesigning the system using the framework approach. I essentially started from a blank project and rewrote the entire thing from the ground up with a single responsibility principle in mind for the entire project, which I am excited to show you so that you can see just how big of a difference that the single responsibility pattern can make for writing professional code. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to a different project now and show you the new refactored version that more closely follows the single responsibility pattern. As I mentioned earlier, for the version 3 update for advanced ARPG combat, I completely rewrote the entire framework from the ground up using composition and the single responsibility principle throughout the entire system. Because of that, advanced ARPG combat v3 is a fantastic resource and showcase for best practices using composition and the single responsibility pattern. So let's go over the framework design and talk about how it uses the single responsibility pattern effectively. In Advanced ARPG Combat V3, the Advanced Combat Framework is the core framework. So this is the core framework that was used to make the melee combat system, the magic combat system, and the ranged combat system. The Advanced Combat Framework was built with a single responsibility pattern in mind. You can see that there are multiple different folders in the Advanced Combat Framework for a bunch of different systems like, for example, the Ability System, the Attribute System, the Collision System, and so on. Think of each folder as a building block or individual component that is separate from the rest of the framework. Each of these building blocks can be used together to build a combat system, just like how I used them to make the melee, ranged, and magic combat systems. Or they can be used standalone as well. That is because each different component of the framework handles specific responsibilities, and each of these components are like Lego bricks used together to build an advanced combat framework. Now let's talk about another huge benefit of the single responsibility principle design patterns used in this combat framework. So if I open up the character class here, for the base combat character, you can see there are, is very little functionality here as well. Here we just have some system-wide events for the character, and that's about it for the parent. There are very little functions. We have some interface functions, but not very many, and, and that's it. I used each of these components like single-purpose building bricks or tools to create the combat framework itself. That's why there is so little code in the character class. This means that the framework can be much more easily integrated into existing projects. So the majority of the work would be integrating with existing character blueprints, like adding the components, implementing the interfaces, and copy-pasting the events. Now, let's talk about how the use of the single responsibility pattern is more than just components. The actual components themselves also follow the single responsibility pattern very well. Recall the old equipment system from that old outdated version 2 of the combat system. In that old version, the equipment system was glued into the entire combat system, and that equipment system was handling too many responsibilities and became huge and monolithic. But if I open the new version that was redesigned to more closely follow the single responsibility pattern, you will see a much different story. If I expand all of these functions, you will see that there is much less than half the number of functions in this component compared to the old version 2. This new implementation is also much cleaner 
and does laser focus on its single responsibility of managing the equipment for the owning actor. There isn't any code here for the combat system or specific gameplay systems or gameplay state changes when new types of equipment equipped. The only role this component has is managing equipment actors for a character or a pawn, which means for most games, you won't even need to modify this component unless you need to modify how the equipment is managed by the system. For gameplay specific implementations, that is handled elsewhere, separating or decoupling core system logic from game specific logic. This also means the inventory and equipment systems can now be completely removed and the combat system can still function independently from these systems. So, as you can see, this redesign perfectly demonstrates the power of the single responsibility principle in action. By breaking down the monolithic equipment component into a focused, single purpose equipment manager, Advanced ARPG Combat V3 achieved something the previous version couldn't true modularity. Each system now has one clear job. The equipment component only manages equipment. Combat modules handle their specific combat code, and the core framework provides generic functionality without too many assumptions. This separation means you can migrate individual systems independently, integrate the framework into existing projects with minimal effort, and modify or remove entire features without breaking unrelated code. What once required major refactoring now becomes as simple as swapping Lego bricks. This is the transformative effect of following the single responsibility principle and embracing composition over monolithic design. While tight coupling typically isn't great, you shouldn't go overboard and try to remove all forms of coupling from your project, because not all coupling is bad. In fact, a certain degree of coupling becomes inevitable in large, heavily customized game projects. For example, if your project uses a large framework like Epic's Gameplay Ability System, then it makes sense that some other gameplay systems might require the Ability System. Just use your own judgment and experience to make sure that coupling only happens between related systems or when otherwise necessary, and try to avoid making completely unrelated systems depend on each other. Like that old V2 project that had the entire combat system depending on the equipment system. That is something you typically want to avoid. If you need more hands-on practice with things like this, we are going to be using these design principles in future videos, so I hope you look forward to that. That brings us to the end of this video. Today, we learned about issues like tight coupling and how it prevents us from creating more scalable code. We covered why composition is a powerful approach for building scalable gameplay systems by breaking down responsibilities into small, reusable building blocks. We covered how composition avoids tight coupling and follows the single responsibility principle, making our game easier to update and maintain. Now you can start designing your own scalable gameplay systems in Unreal Engine. Try experimenting with creating new components, like a health component or attack component that follow the single responsibility pattern. Then attach them to different actors and see how they work together. Thanks for watching. If this tutorial helped you out, then consider liking the video. It really helps the channel grow. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and follow me on social media. I'll see you in the next video.